So I'll just present another case. I think um, you know, part of this is not necessarily complications and how to deal with them, but um, where we are in the TVAR space and um, kind of how complex things can be when you mix um, open and endovascular surgery. Um, so this is a case of a 42-year-old female uh, with Marfan syndrome and long-standing hypertension. She underwent a valve sparing root um, replacement in 2002. I was still in medical school in 2002, and I harassed my partner who did this case. It was probably before it was a really well-described procedure, um, but was it done with a 26 straight graft. Um, and she was probably, she's about 6'3", um, probably not quite a big enough graft, and that left her with um, a moderate AS uh, and severe AI. And then she had distal ascending and arch dilation, but her most concerning pathology was a 5.7 centimeter um, proximal descending thoracic aortic aneurysm uh, in the setting of a chronic type B. And uh, in order to address that, um, we didn't really have an option for her, nothing to sew to in the arch, so we had to address the distal ascending and the arch first. So six weeks prior to this case, which I actually did uh, on Monday of this week, um, she underwent reduced sternotomy. Um, we took uh, an larger aortic root, put in a mechanical aortic valve because she had kind of completed her childbearing uh, years, uh, and then did a total hybrid arch um, and fenestrated the septum from the inside as far down as we could. Um, this is a four-branch plexus graft that we use. Um, so the options here are really um, how are you going to platform yourself to perform the next operation, whether it's open or endovascular? Are you going to take an elephant trunk technique, which can be difficult in a small true lumen, which she had? Or do you want to kind of quote unquote platform the arch with a hybrid graft and take uh, your branch vessels off as proximal as you can uh, close to the STJ so that you have some Dacron to land in uh, or so to on the back end? And so this is her CT scan after that open operation. Um, you can see uh, pretty uh, impressive proximal descending pathology, and then there's, there's a branch graft on the left. Um, with uh, the three arch vessels coming off of that as proximal as possible. There's two radio opaque markers that they take off of that graph. This is just axial imaging um, from kind of each layer. You can see the top left is, uh, is a cut through where that graph comes off, um, pretty close to where the STJ would be. Um, and then you can see the top right is the fenestrated um, septum. So I was able to cut probably, I don't know, five to seven centimeters of the septum out from the inside of the arch when I did that operation, then uh, the other cuts are down in the visceral segment. You can see the celiac's kind of co-perfused with the SMA coming off the true, uh, right renal coming off the true, and left renal coming off the false. So this um, left us with a pretty steep arch angle. Uh, she also had an onyx mechanical valve in place, which made it uh, basically impossible to cross the valve with the wire, according to all of my most brave cardiology colleagues. Nobody wanted to cross that wire. Sometimes in this approach, we would actually go tr get a transapical access uh, and do a through and through wire with that. You can put a five French sheath in with ultrasound guidance and go through and through wire, but we didn't feel comfortable doing that through this valve because if you go through the wrong space in the valve, the wire can get caught. So in this case, we just hubbed a Lunderquist down onto that mechanical valve uh, and rapid paced uh, and hoped for the best. Um, and we got uh, the graft up and over. This is also a Navion device, so a little bit more trackable, a little bit more flexible and low profile, and landed that right at the takeoff of that branch graft and got a nice uh, angiographic result, proximally. Um, we, were, we did have true lumen access um, via IVIS, uh, and so uh, you know, the distal part of this graft is in the true lumen. You can see that where it probably transitions from um, the fenestrated portion to the actual true lumen, it's, it's relatively constrained there kind of three stent uh, frames up. So this is the distal extent. We extended that with a gore because we didn't want to have to get back up into the arch with uh, one of the Medtronic grafts. Their nose cones are just a little bit bigger. So we stayed out of the arch once we deployed that first one. We put a gore tag in between and then extended it distally with another Navion. And you can see, um, I don't know if they're both playing there, but um, we took a Reliant balloon I can go back. Can you just play, make sure both of those are playing if somebody's back there? And so the distal aspect of this graft is very constrained by um, the true lumen. And so this is a balloon septoplasty where we basically 
This is a low uh, inflation pressure of, a, of a, probably a 20 millimeter balloon that we put you know, maybe 12, 14 cc's in and just kind of barely push and pop that septum open to fully expand the graft um, to get a better distal seal. It's a, a harrowing uh, experience. We've done it a couple of times with pretty good results, but when a 42 year old with Marfans, uh, this is probably the uh, scariest part of the case. Um, so we went back up. Uh, Can you do the next slide? This thing's not responding now. So we went back up through with Ivis, and exactly where we saw before, after the first deployment, we still had, we were still relatively constrained um, where we transitioned into the true lumen proximally. Um, and so we uh, did the same thing up top. Um, we had a, probably about a 12 millimeter gradient, um, uh, mean arterial gradient before we ballooned this, and it was down, it was actually there was no gradient when we were done. So there was a little bit of significant kind of pseudo coarctation there that we had created. And by, uh, this one's a, a little bit more difficult to see if you could replay it. But the, on the medial aspect of those stent frames, you can see it kind of pops open a little bit at the very end, right there. So the end result was actually a great distal seal, a great proximal seal, because we landed in Dacron and Dacron. Um, and uh, we're hopeful that we've completely excluded her whole thoracic aorta. Um, and um, she basically now has complete aortic replacement from her root to her celiac and, and will probably later, this is still in, kind of in the fours, but she'll probably later need a visceral debranching if we're gonna continue with an endovascular approach or some kind of open repair of her uh, abdominal aorta. But luckily for me, the cardiac surgeon, I'm done with her because <laughs> I've taken her entire thoracic aorta out finally. Comments or questions? Yes, a question. So I guess, uh, so distally, your endograft is landing in native aorta or craft? Um, distally, it's in native aorta. Okay. Dissected native aorta. Yeah, so I guess a lot of people would be concerned about that in a Marfan's patient. So yeah. you, typically, T-VAR for Marfan's really ought to be from graft to graft, bridging areas of previous operations. Yeah, I think it's controversial. Um, I, there's not a lot of great data. What, you know, we. What we've found kind of anecdotally, and probably should present some of this at some point, but um, we've had good results with the connective tissue patients, and more specifically in the dissected connective tissue patients, they seem to remodel almost better than a conventional non-connective tissue disease patient, maybe because they're, you know, the tissue quality is different or whatever, but they seem to tolerate this. But yeah, it is, um, she's home, okay? So that's the, that's the counter. Um, she went home yesterday. And so, and I did her on Monday. If she was done even here by Dr. Caselli or Dr. Safi, um, she would not have been extubated on, you know, post-op hour six um, and home on Friday. And that's where she is now. And, and, and we'll be able to, I think if we, if we can span the time between when she needs this and something else and there's not something catastrophic that happens, we get the same result, which is total aortic replacement uh, without, you know, a huge thoracic abdominal approach, circa rest and the whole nine yards. And you know this is a this is a minimally invasive meeting, so we got to talk about the teeth. Yeah. So um, she she had a previous valve sparing root, so that was all Dacron, um, and I, my plan was to take those leaflets out and put a mechanical valve in because she was um, comfortable with proceeding with a mechanical aortic valve but it was so small that I couldn't get an adequate size mechanical valve in. So there was already Dacron down to the root with valve leaflets resuspended inside. And so I just opened that Dacron, put some Dacron in between it. Um, actually, in this case, some bovine pericardium. And then I was able to get, uh, I think like a 23 onyx. Um, but I, I could like barely fit a 19 mechanical in her and she's like 6'3". I just didn't think that was big enough. Um, and I've had to take those out and people when they're too small. So um, this was a, it was a bear. It was uh, it was a long and arduous case. So, yes, but that's, are, so she she does have her full root replaced. It was just surrounded in dacron. Yeah, these are very tough cases. That's a good job. One one question is if you were concerned about the valve, and I agree with you, I would not have put the wire across the valve. I think that would have been difficult to defend. Um, what about deploying the graft anti-gridly, right? So you, we've done that where you can have a side graft, use that to deploy the, the stent you know, from the ascending all the way down instead of going retrograde because you don't have, then you would have as much wire yeah. uh, as anchor as possible. So at the time of the initial operate, uh, initial open repair? Yeah. I think you could argue that. Um, 
Or at, yeah, at the end of it, yeah. Right. Um, I think I could have, so that's kind of, it would have just been in a kind of a frozen elephant trunk extension here. Um, I was pretty nervous about how small her true lumen was approximately. In a, I mean, I could try to pull the slides back up, but it was really small. And she had been dissected for like seven years. So um, I was concerned that trying to deploy anything into that true lumen was going to be very restrained and have, and being, if you're deploying an anti-grade frozen elephant trunk on circa rest, you don't really have a lot of time to like get out balloons and start ballooning that open and, and, and trying to ensure patency. So I was reluctant to stiff, to stuff a Dacron down that small true lumen. No, no, I mean, a, after the procedure's done, before you close the chest, okay. you have a side graft from that. Yeah. Just use that as your access instead of deploying from the groin. You're already off bypass, yeah. the patient's doing well. Just put your wire across that side, side graft into the descending and deploy the stent that way. Not a bad idea. I, I, was, uh, I was pretty tired after everything I'd already done, though. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure I was really had a stomach. You know, I've only been out for five years, so I'm not sure I had the Got stomach it. just keep going. But I, I like it. I'll, I'll consider it next time. Can you do a hybrid OR from that? Yeah, I mean, t t typically. Typically, you do these in a, in a hybrid room if you have the luxury. Of, you know, that's what we do. We, we do it, and it works very well because you can do the, everything that you just did, which is a big, good operation, durable, and then you can go in and do that stent, and you have uh, you know you have the access taken care of. I don't know about Marvin. I find it kind of painful to do open pump cases in the hybrid room because the bed's always too wide, and it's. But yeah, our rooms are huge. Yeah, you, you, I saw your rooms today. I wouldn't mind doing some cases in there. I think in the interest of time, I think we're going to move on to the next section. Next, uh, section. Thanks, Bob.